the creators, the latest film in cinemas right now, and it's it's all about robots and artificial intelligence. But I think it has a lot more to say. I can't wait to kind of talk with you about this, Laura. And、mm-hmm. I probably will kind of start this off by saying there might be a few spoilers. We won't spoil the whole thing, but it's kind of hard not to talk about some of the big subject matter that comes、mm-hmm. through this film. But I'd like to start off though. There's been a lot of films over the years about artificial intelligence, robots, and all that sort of thing. Do you have any sort of favorites, or maybe this movie just kind of spurred on some of your favorites that you've thought of over the years? Yeah, I think this de- movie does really like spur you to think about some of the the conversations that we've had for so many years around artificial intelligence, whether it's your Blade Runners, whether it's even a cute one like Wall-E, right? <laughs> and these kind of like. These、exactly. these stories that inspire us to think about, even if it's just technology with a human lens, that is very much what the creator is bringing to the table as well. Oh, I think so. I think that some of my favorites, I do have like Blade Runner has to definitely be one of my favorites, hands down. But I also think I look at、uh, Philip K. Dick's other work of say Minority Report,、mm. that really taps into the the yearning we want、um, to have that assistance, to have that extra help that comes through. Artificial intelligence and robots. I honestly think that a lot of it、um, kind of starts to push us towards the idea of what is humanity. I think.、Mm. That, I mean, we'll even kind of get into this probably a little bit more in the creator itself. But I've been wanting so long because we got to go see this together, but we didn't get a chance to chat about it. And I think we both kind of came out with kind of different. Views of it, different kind of、uh, thoughts on it. But tell me what your initial reaction was. What you thought of this film? Well, first of all, let's look at it as a movie, right? Just as a pure piece of entertainment. I、right. feel like that is maybe where the creator isn't as good as it could be. The way that they piece together the story and how they take you from these kind of heady concepts and understanding what this new world is and who these different characters are, what the Nomada is and where that fits. They piece that sort of together, but then how they execute the entire movie. There were moments where I thought, I'm not quite sure I'm under. Understanding how this bit goes with that bit, and what you're kind of trying to say, like there was a there was a gap between how important they seem to think things were on screen, and then how important it feels for you as the audience watching on, trying to connect with the you know the emotional energy of this movie and just the storyline in and of itself. That was probably a little bit weak, but then I really did feel like at the front they set up this understanding of. What they understood artificial intelligence to be. So there was a there was an element where artificial intelligence is a weapon. It's something that's been designed for destruction. It's something that is, in their language, the next evolution in in,、mm, uh, right. in of humanity. That it's kind of the next step, and that we as humans are going to be taking a step back. We're going、right. to now be the weak link. And also, it brought up the concept quite early on with this Namada that that artificial intelligence, like humanity. Will have something that it worships, a figurehead, a、mm. godhead、That's、that it sort of sits underneath, and so that all stood out to me quite quite early on. And then it was the execution of the movie that made it a little bit more fiddly to kind of stick with at times. Oh, I, I'm right with you. I, visually, this thing was amazing. I thought it was stunning. I, I I find that a lot of times with these artificial intelligence films or robot films, if you just want to call it that. Um, that's where they struggle. Is where the CGI act, and when it kind of connects with humanity, and all of a sudden you're going, oh well, that still looks like a whole bunch of CGI,、uh, you know, that's running、mm. across the screen at the humans, and they're just kind of on a green screen. Well, this one, I felt like they really blended these together brilliantly. The symbiotes、yeah. that are kind of part human and part. Um, part robot and all that, and some of the big ideas that they take on were amazing. I mean, you're you're taking on heaven, you're taking on racism, you're taking on terrorism, you're taking on all of these big big ideas. And unfortunately, I think they tried to just take on way too much、uh, mm. in a for a very short film. They tr- added so many different things in. You kind of lost the plot.、Mm. Where are we at? What are we? What's going on? One thing that really stood out to me rather was. How much they were trying to say, and whether this was something I took away or was intentional from them, I'm not sure. But the way that artificial intelligence would be designed in the image of man, in the way that we as people, if you believe that God created us, we are made in His image. If we as people then create artificial intelligence and robots and everything like that, 
we are then making this in our image. Because it's a movie and because they're using real people as the faces of these robots, which is one of the distinctions with the creator. It's not like, you know, a, a robot face. It's actually a human face combined with right, robotics. Exactly. You are getting a tangible sense of the human emotion, the human identity with it, which is very clever because you can then, as they bring up concepts of a, a robot wondering if it's good or bad, if it's going to heaven or this sorts of stuff, because you're seeing that with a human face, you can believe for a minute that artificial intelligence may have that thought process, that it may consider its beginning and its end and the consequences of its action. Right. Where am I going to end up after I'm here? Is there life beyond these place? Like all of these big fundamental human questions are then transposed onto the, the life of the artificial intelligence exactly. because of the fact that we made it. Even in the name itself, the creator, they seem to be really focusing on what kind of, uh, uh, what kind of thing artificial intelligence would worship and that it would have mm. this need to have a greater intelligence than it. And there's even a scene where the robots are talking about who their saviour might be and their need for freedom, like these big things. And I thought, I wonder, like, I wonder what the filmmaker's intention was in doing that. Is that trying to be a connection between humans' needs and that being transposed onto these robots? Or are they trying to say that whether we, you know, whether we're human or otherwise, everything on earth has some kind of sense of there being more, has some kind of need to be boundless in right. what is possible for us. I love what you brought up about the whole worship aspect. I hadn't really even tapped into that except for there is a primary scene that you go, wow. I mean, even the fact that the Nirmada is actually at like a, it's a monastery type atmosphere going, oh, oh my goodness. That is, that is fascinating that they leaned into that mm. opposed to just kind of being, it's just in a sterile a sterile studio somewhere that's a lab. And we haven't even touched on the fact that Alfie is a child and the only <laughs> right. child that they... There's a there's a conversation they have about the fact that now artificial intelligence is designed in the form of a child and so that makes her more endearing and yet she's meant to be a weapon. So there's something in that too of like if we if we house something dangerous and potentially risky in this really appealing, really cute-cheeked, like beautiful little face, are we going to be more open to it and less feel less threatened by it because of how it is presented? And that in and of itself brings a whole new conversation to light about, oh my goodness. you know, well, come on. the way these I mean, if that doesn't point back to Jesus's story right there, you know, I mean, granted, boy, girl, I, I get it's different. But the fact that it, the, the savior comes in the form of a child, an innocent mm. child, who's still kind of learning and all these different things, but yet it but has... is the a, child innocent? <laughs> is the child innocent? It, it, well, it, because it's also more aware at yeah. her stage of creation i guess mm. it's kind of hard to say because she's this more of a symbiote but even looking at jesus at the age of 11 and what he's able to know and teach even mm. those in the synagogue you know what you're able to kind of go to oh i mean all of and then again well that, that's the only thing about it it's like when they're kind of taking from all of these different ideas but yeah. so much of it is very biblically related that it's mm. not too hard to kind of make these steps these uh, right right back to a biblical conversation which is obviously mm. what we love doing so and but yeah it, it's 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 certainly going to be a movie that prompt some of these discussions. So is it on the watch list? I would say yes, because it's interesting. It's something unique. It's something different. There's nothing out at the moment that is having right. this conversation in the way that it is. Yes, you've got artificial intelligence being a real focus in society as a whole at the moment, but I think you're going to be entertained. You're going to think about something a little bit deep, more deeply. And it's going to be like, it's going to be a good night out if you go and watch it. Is it the best movie ever no is it the most well put together movie that deals with artificial intelligence and robots no. maybe not but it's certainly i'm glad they had a crack at it and i think yeah. it's a useful one to engage with when i first came out i was like going nah not too much but then as i, I ruminated on it kind of thought about it let it kind of sink in i'm going honestly i, I would love to have conversations with people after this film it'd probably mm. be the only thing that would drive me back to the cinemas to, to go back and see it it would be the value of the conversations that would come afterwards and i'd hope that that's what people would really gain by it so i would put it on the watch list because on top of it it was entertaining i mean mm. no i'm not going to necessarily like with the blade with blade runner or with some of these other films that i've watched on auto repeat for so many years I don't know if this the creator will get to that level, but it is definitely worth engaging with. And honestly, for especially as people are 
heading out to the cinemas looking for something, this is actually worthwhile engaging with opposed to some yeah. of the content that comes out in October. So, all right. Well, there you go. Well, we, while we did it, uh, but make sure you're subscribing to the, you know, obviously to the podcast and also you can go to things on our YouTube channel, but also Laura, you have some other podcasts that you do. Yeah, you can check out. And I mean, right back at you. It's always great to have good discussions about movies, but you can find so many other uh, podcasts from Hope 103.2 on our website. You can find them on the Hope Media app where you can also link into this podcast as well and uh, of course subscribe to the watch list so you get the updates and you can find video versions of uh, these discussions too on our Hope1032 YouTube channel.